All right, welcome back. My guest is Stuart Muir from ResourceWorks. We're talking about the new economic strategy that the federal government has launched called Just Transition. But just before the break, Stuart, you were making me feel a lot better than I was after my last week's show. Gina Papano from Invest Now was telling us that there's $14.5 trillion that has moved away from investment in the energy sector. You were giving us the impression that bankers and investors are a bit more pragmatic than that. What's your context for it? Yeah, you know, I'm looking at recent financial results. You're seeing companies with enormous cash flow. You've seen companies like uh, Tourmaline, a Western Canadian natural gas company. It's actually the biggest natural gas producer in Canada. Its shares have doubled this year thanks to high mm-hmm. natural gas prices, strong demand for that. You're, you're seeing, I, I think, uh, a sense that there's been a rebalancing. So the idea that there's a, a capital flight away from fossil fuels is, I think, wishful thinking for the most part. Yes, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, innovation, which I and I know you, Daniel, strongly support. But uh, at the core of it, we still use more energy than ever. Uh, we've fully recovered from the pandemic in the sense of of the the economy. There's some wobbles, yes, but uh, we, we, we have in- increased our global energy use uh, since COVID began. So that's a full recovery. China is back on all eight cylinders. And uh, we, we have to face the reality that, that the world has an enormous reliance on fossil fuels. And we have to take that seriously. Well, let's talk then a little bit about the unique situation Canada finds itself in, because as you pointed out, if you're not an export-driven economy on natural resources, maybe uh, maybe you can transition a lot more easily than Canada. But but, put, but but tell us some of the stats that you looked at when you did your column on resource works. People can check it out. You had a pretty good graph there that to, to really bring home just how dependent we are on the, the natural yeah. resource sector. Yeah, I think there's a kind of uh, mood. You see it in opinion results, public opinion polls, that if you ask probably the average Canadian, you said, what's the future of the economy? They'll probably, based on numerous polls that I've looked at, they'll say things like, well, tourism is going to be the future, uh, high tech, uh, Hollywood North in BC. People love to talk about that. And I know it's huge in Toronto as well. Um, this is This is something that feels good to say that. When you look at the facts of our economy, actually, we're just as reliant today on natural resource commodity exports as we were in the past. 50% of our exports and 50% of our base economy in most provinces is from natural resources and and things related to producing natural resources. So um, is that surprising? Well, there's more consumers in the world than ever. They're using more material goods than ever. Countries like India and China are seeing more middle class prosperity than ever. What do you think they're using? You know, stuff, things. That's what they need to make goods. And that's why for Canada, the realistic future is going to be in mining and energy and forestry and agriculture, aquaculture, things like that, that the world needs. More people need more things. Tell me what the those who have been on the radical side advocating for a just transition, what do they think the new jobs will be? I mean, I remember years ago, Elizabeth May essentially talking yeah. about our energy workers being retrained to install solar panels. And I thought, clearly, that cannot be the, the, the solution they're proposing. But maybe I shouldn't give them that, that much credit. Is that the, the solution they're proposing? Is that everybody moves into the solar and wind business? Yeah, it's it's no more substantial than that at this point in time. There's not much imagination. I think it's just uh, trying to create the illusion that there is a, uh, at at the flip of a switch, we will be able to go from this to that. Of course, life is never so simple as that. That's why I think about uh, transformation of the economy as being something. I mean, we need to recognize climate change, of course. We recognize that as an oil and gas producing nation, a major nation, we have a responsibility in that domain. But that doesn't mean to, go away from it when the world needs more energy all the time. It means to stretch and evolve the things we already do pretty well, so we do them even better in future. That's where the jobs will come from. Tell me why you think, though, that they're, they're, they're obviously uh, believe that the public will buy into this notion that we can transition away 100% from fossil fuels. Why, why do you think that, that that is the prevailing view when we're so reliant, not only on it for our energy, but also for our exports? Yeah, I, I think that um, it, it seems like an appealing idea that you could just, hey, we're going to stop doing this thing that we're, some people are uncomfortable with, and we're going to do that thing instead, and we'll be the people who do that for you. Um, I guess that's appealing to you know a segment of the population. I don't know if everyone would automatically assume that this is is credible, but uh, you know they count votes in ones, and uh, and if a number of people 
adopt this thinking, then maybe it will uh, affect their their behavior at the ballot box. All right. Let me just uh, take a quick pause here. When we get back, I, I, I like the word that you used instead of transition. You're using the word transformation, and that's probably yes. a much better and healthier way for us to talk about the challenges we face. We'll be right back after this. Mm-hmm. 